Hey everybody, uh, I've been meaning to make a video like this for a while now, but finally I have the setup available to do that. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm going to run you through the development of this poster from the sketches to the final, just giving you an idea of, of how I did it, how I, uh, what my process was and that sort of thing. So this is the final poster um, for the Runaway Nuns for their spring tour. It's like an old-timey devil casting some magic on a gold bar. Just your standard poster. Okay, so let's, let's go right to the beginning. Before I even get into this document, let's go to the sketches and check those out because for a while I was a bit stuck on this, on what to do. It had to involve um, a gold bar. That was basically the only art direction I had. I had some words that I just kind of wrote down. Connotations of gold and the band's name, Runaway Nuns, anything like that that can spark an idea. And then basically I got kind of transfixed on this idea of a, of a nun. There's one of those early ideas. But yeah, there was something about the composition. I think I was just trying to... Um, the, the, there was too much in the idea. It wasn't like perfectly clear, but it would have been a, a nun holding like a gold bar. Then there was an idea where the nun was a skeleton, which I kind of blew up. I mean, like that could have worked. It's not a, the worst idea, but I was trying to. <laughs> there's a weird one. But these are just you know rough ideas. Seeing what I could um, do. Here's some like again. Sometimes when I get stuck on an idea, I will just sketch onto like a black document. It just helps sometimes to reverse it so that I'm not drawing lines onto white and I'm kind of blocking in shapes rather than lines. It just kind of sometimes helps with ideas and composition and stuff. So I did that for a bit, tried that. There's like a golden nun. There's the skeleton in the back again holding some gold. There's another one. Yeah, it's just kind of trying a different composition with the same idea. Messing around, what if it's a face instead of that? That was kind of like that Netflix documentary. They used a similar thing, so I was like, no, that's a terrible idea. And then I did this, and I was happy with that idea. That was actually the initial idea. Let me find out where that actually came from, if there's... Oh, I've got a, I've got a um, pen sketch that I did on paper. Sometimes, again, when I get stuck, I'll just draw on paper um, because it, it helps a lot to change it up. I think it helps your mind think of different things. So anyway, I drew this um, devil holding his hands over a gold bar on paper. And then I was like, that could be an idea. So I jumped on the computer and I did this, which was like a color sort of blocking in rough. I mean, if you look at the process, it's very messy. But starting from the ground up, I mean, look how, look how that looks. Anyway. That was the sort of rough, and I was like, okay, that, that can work. And then I started a bit more development on that. I changed it. I'm just painting directly on. So I'm, I'm literally going in with, like, yellow and going, okay, yeah. And then I could do some highlights like that, coming off the gold. That could work. And I'm just, I'm just developing it as I go along. There's, instead of the gold bar being the type, but then it kind of doesn't have what they asked for, so... That didn't work. What else? Yeah, I'm just playing with ideas because quite often this is where you, there's there's an idea of taking the flames away on the side and just having them at the bottom. There's, yeah, a different one where it's more plain. And obviously that's where it went. This all happened in the space of like half an hour. It was a very quick process of, of coming up with this idea. But you can kind of see the genesis of it with, okay, so there was obviously a pencil sketch, but then Figuring it out a, a lot more simply here without the, the flames around it worked. And then just adding a bit more in. And yeah, that became the, the basis for, for the final poster. So let's just move into the main document now. And I'll show you what I did from there. So I took the sketch. So there's my sketch. There's my very rough sort of like blocked in. This is more of a compositional sketch than anything else because everything is going to change and be redrawn. But things are sort of where I'd like them to be. I do a lot of resizing up and down at this stage also just to kind of get everything as centered as possible so that it's ready for me to you know continue with it. 
So anyway, I dropped down the opacity on that. And then I drew myself some guides, which is um, these, these two guides are what I've always done. Just tells me where the center of the image is. So I know that if things are looking symmetrical or not symmetrical, you know, in terms of composition, this border helps me because then I know that within the poster, you know, con to try and contain everything within that, those boundaries, it's going to have a nice uniform feel at the end. And just to remind you what it looks like, you see how everything sort of finishes in, at these edges. Anyway, back to the, the sketch. So this is something I haven't really done before, but I gave it a try this time because I'm trying to get better at it, but these are some compositional lines, which kind of gives me a bit of a grid. And the, as you can see with the, with the sketch underneath it, the point of them is to give you a sort of idea of a composition to stick to when, when drawing up the sketch. So these lines, I'm, I did a triangle at the top, which is a classic sort of compositional shape. I've been reading a lot, just, just so I can name drop the book. I've been reading a lot of Andrew Loomis's books, um, specifically one called Creative Illustration, and they talk a lot about composition. Um, he talks about composition and explains it really well. So that's something I've been sort of thinking about and reading up on lately. So anyway, I was trying to use it here. And the point of it is, of course, that when you do your sketch, you take the shape of the devil's head, for instance, and you you kind of contain it and keep it within these boundaries so that everything, once they're drawn up, sits in a similar sort of place and along similar lines that work with your composition. And it's very helpful because you just do your best to keep things in that shape. You don't have to. You'll see that the gold bar breaks out of the shape because it, it's, you know, to keep that shape, you have to, you have to have that sort of corner. But just to keep things like that with the grid, you'll see that once everything is said and done, everything works quite well together as standalone objects. But anyway, let's take a look. So I gave myself those guides and then I went in and I did a first sort of round of sketching that looked like that. So just basically going directly on top of this background and drawing in the the basic shapes. If I make this white, you'll be able to see much better. There we go. That's a much better indication of how this looked. So I went with black pencil. I dropped the opacity of the initial sketch. And yeah, that's, that's the first sketch that I came up with. See it without the guides, like that. So this was pretty rough. As you can see, I'm just doing basic construction with the head to try and get everything where it needs to be. The hands, I had a bit of help because what I did, I swear, to, I swear there was a different sketch at one point that I've lost again than I did for the hands. Oh, maybe it was on this specific layer, yes. So those are the hands that I drew in with no, with no reference at all. That was just my sort of like, an idea of what the hands should look like. And then I took some photos in the mirror of my hands and I also placed a, a, just a basic lamp underneath my hands. And that gave me the sort of underlit effect that I would use later on in the illustration. But yeah, basically I took some photos of my hands. I had to take them one by one because I had to hold the phone with the other hand. So I took those photos, using those as reference, I then took those hands and I drew those with reference over there. So that's my first sketch that I did. Then using this sketch as a basis, I did a better sketch on top of it. So I basically dropped the opacity of that sketch and just drew directly on top of it, just refining things. You'll see there's not a huge amount of difference, but if you look, for instance, look at this weird finger over here, this guy. And how it looks so much better once I've done the, the drawing on top. They're not perfect, but they're, they're exactly what I wanted for this drawing. Um, again, with the, with the face. See, that's kind of like, there's something weird about it. It's a bit unrefined, and now it feels much more 
correct after I've done a, a second sketch on top of it. So you see there's a lot of iterations to this. Anyway, so then I took this sketch, dropped the opacity of that, and then this is basically now my basis for the, for the final illustration. And you can see again with the, with the lines how this sketch adheres to all the intersections and the boundaries that are created by this, by this composition sketch. Over here, they sort of touch. And that's still, it's not, a, it's not a triangular shape, it's a rounded shape, but it still creates that composition of a triangle because the lines are all following. As you can see here, the, the fingers also touch the lines there. This is also, this is a very basic composition. This is nothing you can get very in-depth with compos uh, composition. And again here, this is where the, the shape breaks out of the boundary, but it doesn't really matter because that asymmetry also makes things more interesting. Obviously, the, uh, the sort of cloak, I guess, that he's wearing also follows this boundary on both sides. So again, just reinforcing that composition that, you know, the whole thing is laid upon. Okay, so I took the sketch, dropped the opacity, and then the first thing to do is to ink it. And I do that by usually, yeah, I choose a section, you go, I'm ready to start from the beginning here, like the hands, and I'll just ink that in first. And of course when I'm inking, I'm thinking about things like which direction is the light coming from. And in this situation the light is, the, the, the gold bar is the light source. So on both of the hands, the light is going to be shining up from, from the bottom. So I know that these outlines that are closest to the gold bar are going to be thinner than parts that veer away. That's a very exaggerated version, but as you can see with this line, it goes thinner there and then thicker there. Very slight, but it's, it's there. Um, it also, it's just a rhythm, so you, you want to kind of go thin, thick, or thick, thin, and always have the lines kind of have a flow to them. I mean, if you look at Inkers like Jack Kirby and Charles Burns and um, a lot of the, the early Marvel Comics guys, um, they have a real flow to their line work, which is really beautiful. Again, here at the back of the thumb, you're going from like a thinner part up here to a thicker part down here. And again, this is something that's very subtle. Some, I mean, sometimes I do a much more exaggerated version of that, but this is a poster where you're not really going to see these outlines because this is going to be black all around here. So as you can tell, you're not really going to see that. So I wasn't concentrating too much over there. But yeah, basic, basic line work going throughout the whole drawing. As you can see, I'm just doing section by section all the way forward. For the, for the gold bar, I used guides, which is a feature that Clip Studio Paint has. As you can see, if I turn them on, there are these purple things here. Don't know if you can really see it, but there they are. So it's just like vectors in Photoshop, but it's a guide, and then you can draw. Why isn't it letting me draw upon it? There we go. Then if you just drag your pen, you can go thin to thick and stick on the same line, um, no matter what that line is. So I drew some guides for the gold bar. That helped a lot, because doing straight lines like that is a bit crazy. Yeah, so now I've got the basic outlines, and then I start filling in the blacks, so where the, where the ink is going to go. So actually, I'll, let me stop there, because what I did then is change the background to be black, and I dropped in the color so that I've got now the flat version of the poster. So the color is, yeah, basically just using the magic wand on the, on the ink layer and selecting red, 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 etc., and filling them all in, an, in a folder underneath. So there's my colors. If you take off the ink, there's the, the folder of the colors. So dropping the colors in, then I can start shading. It's nice to have colors when you're shading. It's just, I don't know, it's a more pleasant experience, I think. Um, but you can't do this without dropping in the colors anyway. But I started blocking in the shadows at this point. I'll turn down the composition sketches there. 
yeah, I started um, started dropping in the colors. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, ignore that for now. I don't know what I did there. So I started dropping in the black sections. I knew that I wanted the cape around his neck to be quite dark so that the black will frame his face. Because, and I'll show you, because I, there we go. I already filled it in there, but you'll notice how the, the, the face, especially on the edging here, kind of gets lost when there's just red and then red behind it. And then as soon as you drop that black in, suddenly you get that same shape, but it's very clear because it's got a contrast between the color and the black. So, you know, I'm just trying to like make everything pop a bit more, make it more graphic. So yeah, so more, more shading there. I'm, the whole time I'm imagining the light source being gold and coming from the bottom. So, you know, in these sections, the, the, the nose is casting a shadow here and here, and these of course the eyebrows, but you've got shadows being cast by any, any object that has a three-dimensional form, and this light is hitting it here and casting that shadow there. So again, I'm, this part, the, the, the shading on the face was mostly just out of my head. So basically just going in and filling in the shadows where, where I think that they'll fall. And this is a thing that I refine as I go along. So even though this is all on one layer, I'll do a bit and I'll come back to it later. And, you know, you're just constantly trying to think what works, what isn't working, what is correct, what is incorrect in this situation. If you have a reference, for instance, on the hands, I have those references. It makes it a lot easier because you have a guide to, to show you which are the darker parts, which are the lighter parts when you've got lighting like that. So anyway, I continue to, to just fill in all those shadows. I fold in the shadow on the, on the gold brick. And the moustache, I, I widened a bit there. But some of this comes a bit further on because around this time, I also begin to do the shading. Now the shading at this point, they turn all that off. I started with the face. And again, I'm just imagining that this light source is coming from the bottom and it's hitting the curve of the chin, it's hitting the side of the jawline, it's hitting the top of the lip. These are all parts of the face that would be angled towards the gold, so it's going to be picking up the gold light the most. So I started with the face, and again, I'm just, it's, it's a lot like painting. I'm going in and I'm constantly touching up and figuring out different parts. So, you know, maybe I'm doing that to the ears, and then I'll go, maybe the light's catching here. So I have to do it on the other side too. And just going through one by one and adding in all the lighting. So then you see I, I, I use that same yellow color to shade the white because it's the closest thing to like a, a sort of white mid-tone that I've got with this color palette. And it works quite well. So, you know, it works with the coloring and everything. So that's what that is. Dropping in the, the, the highlights that would be on the cape because those highlights are going to that edge of the cape is going to be closest to the gold bar so the highlights are just going to be bouncing right off onto it and then the hands and of course i've got the guide for the hands right here so i can tell okay there's the brightest part of the hand and if you think about it this part is all in light here this part is all in light all in light and you just Looking at the photo, which I have on a second monitor always, I have my reference set up there. So then you look at that photo and you go, okay, that's the sort of shape. Well, that's the sort of shape that you want in the hand. This part then is in shadow there. And then this would be a sort of mid-tone here. And then some more shadow over here. And then if you look at how the hand looks, it looks a lot like that because I was just using the photo as reference. So that made it very easy to shade the hands. Some highlights on the gold bar and then that's for the type. So let's get into the type quickly. Um, if you go to my sketches again, those initial sketches, you'll see that, yeah, there, there isn't really much of a typeface going on there. So what I did with the type, and this is kind of like the process with most of the type that I do, is I'll do the type roughly. 
and then I'll box it in. So this is, I think, using that initial sketch there. Even just having it written that uh, sort of roughly acts very well as a guide to show you where to, where to put the letters and how long the letters will run with. So I left that on. And then I gave myself boxes here to show me where the type should fit. Because you don't want the type to be closer to any side of this. You don't want the type to be closer here, or closer here, or closer here. See, those are all uniform sizes. So I gave myself a box to work within. And then I just roughly filled in where the letters are going to fall. So if you take away the bottom sketch, you'll see. See, that doesn't really look like the type that much. But now I know how far it is to get from here to here and how many letters are going to fall within this so you can see it's you know now now I know there's the R there's the U there's the A there's the W etc so now using this and I mean this is this all happens quite quickly you just sort of iterate on the first sketch so then I did this which you'll see is another step up. Now I'm using the guide from below and I'm just roughing in the type on top. And I mean this is, I've done this a thousand times so I find it uh, I'm more comfortable just drawing directly on but I would often do another iteration before getting to this stage uh, just to get the, the type looking quite nice and make sure that things like the gap between the letters is of a similar size the spacing, and making sure that all the letters follow like a, sim a similar style where I've, I've curved the edging on the type, which is something that I, I that persists throughout everything because I wanted to keep it a more sort of rounder, not so sharp looking type. So anyway, taking that sketch, let's dive back into this now, taking that sketch Oh, now I don't know which layers I turned off. <laughs> there we go. So I've got the sketch now. First I tried an idea where the sketch would be kind of like um, shivering in a way, kind of jittery. And I decided to keep it a bit more simple. So using this sketch, I just go in and I basically ink the, the letters. So as an example here, you just sort of to the best of your ability, try to keep it neat. You just trace over the outline you've created. And like sometimes you can get hung up on this and try to make it super um, neat. And I've done that before. But sometimes I, I kind of like the, the sort of look of a more freeform typeface where you don't have to worry about it looking too perfect and you get a bit of a character around it, uh, a character from it. So anyway, I do that and I come up with the final type. From there I did some experimenting firstly on color. I think I made this white and saw what it would look like with a bit of a shadow so that it sort of is inset that I wasn't too much of a fan of that. So then I decided, okay, having a bit of a highlight on the edge is probably a nice idea. Oh, that's the, the kind of shine from the gold bar. So on the highlight layer here, I added those highlights for the gold bar. There's the, the tour subheading just roughed in there. And we'll get to that in a moment with the, well, I guess we can get into it right now. But then I took the typeface that I, I did some type in, um, in Illustrator over here, where I just laid out very roughly the type that I wanted. Okay, this is a bit less rough, it's a bit neater. But I, I laid this type out how I wanted it to look on the poster. And 
imported it into the document and then I just traced that but using single strokes. I did the same for the, the full tour. Didn't take as long as you'd, you'd think, but filled that in. So then I've got my type. And then the only thing that was left was to do the uh, the kind of like flourishes, the final touches to it. So what I did was I uh, kept in mind the outer border. I think it's all in this folder. Yes, so at this point, um, I just started experimenting with sort of the shine coming off the, the gold bar. For a while I thought maybe that was the answer to have a sort of um, sort of very comic booky shine, but I didn't think it fit as well. So I went with some white rays. What is this layer doing? There's nothing on that layer. There we go, and some thunderbolts because I love drawing thunderbolts. Now you see here they break out of the boundary, which I did on purpose because if you're going to establish a boundary around the entire poster, I always like to break out of it in a few sort of key places just so that it's not, it, it gives it a bit more energy, it makes it feel a bit more alive when things are breaking out of the boundaries because it's just a little less static. So the thunderbolts and then some more rays, some golden rays in between the white ones and then dots, which is another thing that I love drawing. But with these, I basically, it's as simple as I have a brush, which is just a circle. I call it my dot brush, and I just go in and I just draw in dots. And I keep in mind that this is the border, and you don't want things to just sit on the border because they're going to look very unnatural. You just want some dots to be close, and some parts to just have no dots close to it. Everything is very, you just want to try and build up like a randomness, which is why I'll put two dots together there, and then no dots around it, and one dot there. And just keeping in mind, again, like almost like a rhythm with how many dots are around. And like a similar sort of density of dots. Again, this is something I've done a thousand times, and it used to take a lot longer than this, but yeah, I, I, I just like the energy that they create. So, drew in all the dots. That's where I thought maybe I'd let the dots break out of the boundary, but gave up on that. Look, at this point, with the finishing touches, I'm just kind of, just getting to a point where I think I'm happy with it, uh, and this is, you know, this is finished. Because at some point you've got to go, which is better, that or that, and it's just personal preference. And yeah, and so then I ended up with this, and that was that was the process for this for this poster. Yeah, I hope to be doing more of these videos soon. Um, this is of course just the first one, and please let me know if you if you enjoyed it and if this was at all helpful, because I enjoy explaining how I do things because I know that I've had other artists do it for me, and it is always incredibly useful to see how other people do their work. Thank you for watching. Catch you all soon.